your, your altimeter and your vertical speed indicator. If this becomes clogged, if that hole's clogged up, then you're not going to have Correct. accurate information. And then this is called a stabilator. It's a horizontal stabilizer in the elevator and a Cessna. But in the Pipers, this is called a stabilator. The hole back in. So we just want to have free movement. You can sell as we do. You can see that yoke moving forward and back. We just want to make sure that relationship's good, and it is. And then this is our elevator tram. So let's turn this above your head. And as you adjust this, it just kind of moves your nose a little bit up and down and keeps it in that slipstream so it's easier for you to fly hands off without all those pressures. When we get up underneath though, we do want to make sure that our hinges are good. So we've got a pin that goes all the way across, that there's no cracks in the hinges and all those rivets are there. One of the worst things that can happen to you is losing control of your elevator trip. This is going to be a nightmare to drive because it's going to be there as many times as you want it. We've got two more hinges here. Two more, one in the middle, and one on the edge of that side. Just want to make sure that all those pins are there, all those rivets are there, and there's no kinds of cracks or anything, and there's one above your head there. Um, now, I have a question. Is it is it just as easy to look from the top, or? Um, you can, the, is it, I mean, is but it better and pre it's preferred? It's better underneath, because you're going to be able to see if there's any cracks or anything that you probably wouldn't be able to see when you're on, when you're okay. on top. Yeah. All, right. all right, and then what we're looking for is we're walking around, you can try not to move the rudder a lot with your hands. You can look at it, but don't. It's it's generally positioned to help keep your nose straight in flight. Okay. So if you force it around, you can get it out of position and cause all kinds of issues okay. where you're having to use a lot of rudder in flight. So we don't really want to handle that too much. Get the beacon up top. And then really we're just looking for anything noticeable in the fuselage that might cause a problem. We didn't notice last time. Birds hitting it, things like that. All right. All right. And our aileron. So our trailing edge, our leading edge of our wing, and our ailerons. And again, just like we did the elevators, we're just going to gently rise and lower, raise and lower them, and then make sure that that relationship is correct for our yokes, and it is. Right. And then, same thing as before, we're going to get down underneath, and we're going to look for our hinges. We've got four bolts on each and a pin, and there's no cracks or anything on the hinges, and the same thing should be down there. Yeah. Okay. Good. Go to the outside. We have position lighting, what we call navigation lighting, just like on boats. It's red on the left and green on the right. It helps us, especially at night, kind of figure out where the plane is in relationship to us if we've got one up there. This is our stall warning. We've got a light on the dash that lets us know when we're about five to ten knots above the stall speed, and that'll give us a warning for that. So our fuel, if it's full, it's 25 gallons. If it's up to that tank or that little lip there, which it's not, it's at 18. So we're automatically going to get fuel and we're going to fill it up to that lip. So we'll have 18 on both sides. So we'll be getting fuel today. Most people only fill it to that 18. So chances are, well, every time we fly, we're probably going to fill this plane up. Just so you know. Okay. And then if we follow the checklist, which we always should, <laughs> the next thing to do is to get on the ground here and to look at our pitot tube. So our pitot tube supplies ram air to our airspeed indicator. And it's the only thing, it's the only instrument that uses the pitot tube. But if this hole on the beak is clogged or frozen, or that one is, our airspeed indicator is not going to record properly. And so we need to make sure that that's clean. And then, come over here, we've got our fuel vent right here. Again, make sure that that's clean so it allows a nice flow of the fuel to the, uh, to the engine. And then we've got our tire. So with tires, check pressure, we check tread. We've got the pin here on this side. It's attached well. And then on the other side, these are disc brakes. And we're looking for that little pin right there. Okay. We just want to make sure it's not the pin, I should say that little disc right there. But we want to make sure it's at least like a nickel okay. wet width and then you're going to be okay. And then we're just looking for all the bolts. So if you look on this side here, We've got bolts, we've got bolts, we've got a brake line, everything's attached well, no leaks, and then you want to see at least three fingers of the silver right there for our hydraulic system, and you've got way more than that. So we're in good shape on the tire. Then we can get out of here. And we can go to the nose. We're gonna check our prop and spinner. 
There shouldn't be any give at all. And we're looking for any kind of cracks, dents, things that would affect the aerodynamics of your spinner. Because I mentioned the other day, these are airfoils. They are producing lift for us. Anything that can hurt that lift is going to be a big problem for us trying to climb out or maintain altitude. And then we're looking for airflow. So the engine is primarily air-cooled. And if there's any kind of rags, animals, you know, birds, squirrels building nests in here, you get up in the air and that clogs up the air, you're going to overheat your engine, you're probably going to lose your engine. So that looks good. Lights. And then just a general look at the tire. I don't like checking tires under, under propellers. So I'm going to do that from the side. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at the tire, check the pressure. Um, I'm going to make sure we got at least three fingers of the hydraulics, which we do, and then just the bolts. Make sure everything looks like it's attached well, and we're in good shape. I don't like I don't like that propeller. I stay away. From it. <laughs> right. And then we'll check our oil. So pop up the cowling, and really for most planes, we keep it within two of the max. So max is eight in this one. Uh, if you put eight in here, you're just gonna burn it off immediately and you're just gonna end up constantly putting oil in. If you keep it around six, which is usually what we'll do, two to the max, and we're good at six. Then um and let me see if we can we might be a little bit below six. Or a little bit. I'll probably put about a half a quart in here before we take off. And then when you tighten it up, just the first tighten, don't lengthen. And then when you put the cowling back on, just be really careful that you're going underneath that lip when you lock it. Otherwise, this cowling will open up its light on you. It's not a fun experience. All right, so we'll get oil, and then we're going to go to the right wing. We're pretty much going to do everything in reverse. This is your cabin air filters when you see them on here. Just make sure those are clean, just in case you know, it gets hot up there. And then, again, we're not to that lip, not to that ledge there, which would require 18 on both sides. So that is, again, something we're definitely going to get fuel today for. Come down, we got the tire over here. Again, tread is really good, pressure's good. We've got the pin. good all the attachments are good and then you've got your fuel vent on this side and no pedo tube on this side obviously just the one on the other right, and then we'll come out walk around we've got the green light on the right for your navigation light looking at the leading edge and then the trailing edge we get to our ailerons and we're going to check that same kind of movement as we go up and down you can see the yoke moving around in there and we're going to get underneath and we're going to check the hinges. So we got four bolts and the hinge looks good over here with the pin. Four bolts and that hinge looks good above your head. Yes. All right, we got flaps on this side. So um, we want to do a couple things. One, we're going to fuel. So I'm not going to sub the fuel until we get new fuel. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go get some oil. So we'll pull this over, get fuel, and I'll get some oil and put it in. I'll show you where the oil is. Uh, it's right inside. We just have to tell Flight Services what plane it goes to, and they'll bill it to the to the uh, account for that specific plane. Not you, just okay. Flight School keeps track of what plane. Right, right. 